Hey guys, in this video, you are going to learn how to add this glass effect with vanilla HTML and CSS. And we will make this simple project where we will have a toggle button and an image and a glass element over the image. With the toggle button, you can toggle the glass effect to hide the image or show the image. If you are just a beginner in HTML and CSS, this video will be very helpful for you. We will use little bit of JavaScript at the end to have the toggle effect. If you don't know JavaScript, then you can skip that part. I will put the timestamps too. Or if you are just a beginner in JavaScript, then you will learn how to manipulate HTML elements with JavaScript. Alright, so enough talk and let's get started. By the way, I've already written a blog post about it on killscoding.space. I'll put the link on the description. You can check that out for future reference. Alright guys, so I have a project set up on my text editor. I have created three files. I have created main.html, index.js and style.css. I also have a media folder which is containing the image. And the HTML file is opened up with live server on my browser. You can see. So first I'm going to add the HTML, then I'm going to add the CSS and lastly we are going to add the JavaScript code. So let's first add the boilerplate code for our HTML. I'm going to use Emmet for adding the boilerplate code. So this is our boilerplate code. Let's add the title, class effect. So first of all I'm going to add a container, so dot container. And inside the container, we will have an image container. So dot image container. And inside the image container, we will have an image with a class of image. So image source will be dot slash media slash photo dot jpeg. And the class would be image. And after the image tag, we will have a empty div tag for adding the class effect. So dot class. So it will have a glass class and also it should have a hidden class. The hidden class will turn off the glass effect. We are going to use JavaScript to toggle the class. Then I want a button. So button which will have a toggle button class dot toggle button. And inside the button, we will have the text like this, show the image or hide the image. The show and the hide part will be inside a span tag so that we can toggle it. So span, I will add a class and the class will be hide or show. And by default, the text will be hide. And then the image. Okay, so let's save the file and you can see the image. It is pretty big and we have this button. So we need to fix them with CSS. So first what I want to do is I want to shrink the image. I want the image container to take 50% width of its container and the whole container should have minimum height of 100 view height, which will take the full height of the screen. So let's first link our CSS file in our HTML. So link. And Emmet has completed everything for me. Let's go to style.css and reset our browser styles. So select everything with asterisks. First, I want padding to be zero. Then margin will also be zero. And box sizing will be border box. Let's save it. And you can see the changes has been applied and we don't have any default margin or padding. Now let's fix the image container and the container class. So dot container, the min height would be 100 view height. That means it should take all of the height of the screen. And the image container should take 50% width width will be 50% and the actual image should take 100% width of its container. So dot image width will be 100% and you can see the image has been shrinked. 
the image container is taking 50% width of its actual container and now we need to center them horizontally and vertically we need to align them next to each other. I'm going to use CSS grid for that. So make the container a grid container. So display grid, then justify items will be center. And you can see all of them are aligned centered horizontally. And there's a problem that is the button is looking weird. I think I should add a container to it. So let's go to HTML file and let's wrap up the button with a button container. So dot button container. Let's cut it and paste it here. Now let's save the file. Okay, so now it is looking good. Now I want both of the children to be centered vertically, but next to each other. All I need to do, make the image container align self to the end. So image container align self to the end. Okay, so they are aligned next to each other, but I need some spacing horizontally. So let's add a gap, actually row gap. So grid row gap would be three rem. Now it's good. Let's style the button. Select the toggle button class dot toggle button. The padding will be one rem. Background will be red. Border will be none. Text color will be white. Width will be 15 rem and the cursor will be pointer. Let's save it and here is our button and if I hover over it we have a cursor effect. Okay now when I click on the button you can see a black ugly border so let's remove that. For that I need to add a pseudo selector so dot toggle button then focus we need to use outline property, which will be none. And now if I click on it, there is no ugly border. And now we are going to do the thing that you are most waiting for, which is the glass effect. Now to make the glass effect, we need to use the empty div that we have created for the glass. And this div will be positioned absolute and it will be positioned relative to the image container because we will make this image container position relative. Now, if you don't know anything about CSS positions, or if you have any kind of confusion about CSS position, you can check this video out. I will put the link on the description because if you don't know how CSS position work, this might feel confusing to you, okay? So let's go to the image container and let's make it position relative. And let's select the class class. So dot class. It will be positioned absolute. Top will be zero and left will be zero two. Height will be hundred percent. Also width will be hundred percent. And just for demonstration, make the background any color. I will put black. Let's save it and you can see our glass div is taking the full width of the image container and it is now black covering up the actual image. And now let's just remove the background. To make the glass effect or you can say the blur effect, we need to use a single property. A single property will work which is backdrop filter. So backdrop then filter and we need to use a blur function. So blur and here we need to specify how much blur do you want. I want 10 pixel of blur. Now let's save the file and you can see it here is our blur. Okay, so that's how you add the class effect, but by default, the blur effect should not be turned on. It should be turned off. So that's why we're going to use the hidden class. So dot hidden, it will be display to be none. 
and now we don't have our glass effect okay okay so we are almost done with the css the only thing i need to add is the click effect like this you can see when i click the button the button just move down a bit so i want to add that effect so we need to use the active selector so i will copy this line so instead of focus it should be active we need to use the transform property so transform and we also need to use translate property on x-axis I want 0 and for the y-axis I mean the vertical axis I want this to be moved down by 2 pixel so 2 pixel so let's save the file now if I click on the button you can see the effect okay so we are done with CSS now we are going to add the hide and show functionality with JavaScript. So let's go to index.js file. But first we need to add the file to our HTML file. At the bottom of body tag, we need to use the script tag. So script and the file is index.js. First we need to select three elements, the glass element, then the button element, and then inside the button we have a span tag, remember? containing the height text, we also want to select that. So let's do that. So first will be the toggle button. So const toggle button, then document dot query selector. And inside the query selector, we can pass any kind of selector like class ID or anything. So we're going to use the class. So dot toggle button then the class document dot query selector and the selector will be dot class then again const hide or show again document dot query selector and the class will be hide or show and now we need to add the click event listener to the toggle button. So toggle button dot add event listener. And the first argument is the event name, which is click. And secondly, our callback function. We don't need to pass any argument. Now, when we will click the button, the hidden class should be toggled in the class element. So if the hidden class is already existed there, we want to remove that. If the hidden class is not inside the element, then we want to add that. So that's how we are going to toggle it. To do that, use the class element. So class dot class list dot toggle. And we're going to pass the class name, which is hidden. Actually, I'm going to use the hidden word to multiple times, so I'm going to store that in a variable, const hidden, and I will just cut it from here. And pass the hidden variable. So let's save the file and see if it works or not. So I will click on it, and you can see the blur, and if I click on it again, the blur goes away. Okay, so the toggle effect is really working and we're almost done. The only thing that we need to do is change the text when we will click the button. So we need to check if the hidden class exists on the glass or not. If the hidden class exists on glass, then we want to change the text content of the hide or show element. So let's check if glass.classList.contains and we need to pass the class name, which is hidden. That's why I have stored that inside a variable. So if that's true, then I want the text to be hide. So hide or show dot inner HTML would be hide else the text will be show. So I will copy this line. Instead of hide, it will be show. Okay, so let's save the file. So let's try this out. So I will click on the button. 
Okay, so toggle effect is working and also the text is changing when I click the button. Okay, so everything is working fine. And that's how you add a class effect with vanilla HTML and CSS. All right, guys, so if the video has been helpful for you, don't forget to like, share and subscribe to my channel. It really motivates me to create more content just like this. Also, if you have any question, just comment down below. If you have any feedback or any suggestion, please comment down below. I would love to hear from you. You can also follow me on any social media as that Anjan. And I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.